This is MathGuy.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. We're going to take a look at rational expressions with exponents. And specifically this video, which is our fourth video on this topic uh, of the rational expressions, this video is specifically going to be designed uh, around negative exponents. So we're going to do two examples. First one's going to get a little glitchy. Uh, I should say flashy not glitchy. We hope there's be going to be no glitches. Uh, Alright, so first thing off, we're going to have a problem. Uh, you can see that it's got a fraction bar, so that's where the ratio comes in. And we got a set of parentheses on the outside. We have a negative exponent. So certainly in this problem, we will not be able to avoid negative exponents. Now, uh, if you remember our rules, We've gone over our video or text lesson on the rules for dealing with exponents. Uh, there are four different rules and really there's many ways to do this problem uh, and to attack it. Like which rule should you use first is usually the question that students have. I always like to clean up inside the parentheses when I can. So that takes us to one of our rules which we're going to see right away. Okay, this is rule number two, and um, I'm going to execute this simplification. So when we're dividing like bases, you subtract the exponents. Okay, so I'm going to do just that. So if I subtract 8 minus 12, I get negative 4. Okay, likewise, I'm going to subtract these exponents, 5 minus 3, because you can only do like bases with like bases, right? X's with X's, Y's with Y's. And I'm going to get 5 minus 3 is 2. Okay, so even though I don't have to do this, I'm going to show that there is nothing in the denominator here. So that's why I'm going to leave a 1. So when we're done using rule number 2, we just leave a 1 in the denominator, or you don't even have to write anything in the denominator. So next, we have exponents in our parentheses and we're raising all of this stuff in parentheses to another exponent. So we have powers being raised to a power. So let's take a look at another rule. This is rule number three. So to use rule number three we just have to be a little bit careful. Remember that if you don't see an exponent, like I don't see an exponent on this three, there is an exponent. I have one copy of three. So there's why, That's why I'm putting the one there. All right, so what do we do? Well, this rule says we have a power raised to a power. We just multiply those exponents together. So I'm going to multiply 1 times negative 2. I'm going to multiply negative 4 times negative 2. And I'm going to multiply 2 times negative 2. It's almost like I'm distributing this negative 2 amongst all those powers or exponents. All right, so let's see. That would be negative 2 if I multiply. That would be 8 and this would be negative 4. And if I'm raising 1 to any power, it's going to be 1 anyway. So I don't have to bother with this powers or exponents in the denominator. All right, so next we have negative exponents to deal with. But now, there is really nothing on the outside of this parentheses, these sets of parentheses. I don't really need to write them anymore. So once I distributed those these parentheses are pretty much meaningless. All right, so our, our next task is to deal with these negative exponents, and that brings up our next rule. This is rule number four. Okay, so our rule number four states that if you do have a negative exponent, you change the exponent to the opposite, so negative h becomes h, and then you move this. You, you move it. Now, I know it's not written on here, but remember, this is in a numerator. So if it's in a numerator, you move it to the denominator. Okay, and that's exactly what I'm going to do for this rule. Okay, so let's see. That means I'm going to have to move the threes and the y's, but I don't have to move the x's. So eight x's remain in the numerator, and I got two threes. They have to get moved to the denominator to change the exponent to a positive. To change this exponent to a positive, I'm going to move those four y's in the numerator. I'm going to move them to the denominator. 
right, that takes care of that rule. Now, the only thing that remains for cleanup <coughs> is to take care of these numbers. Uh, there's really nothing we could do with the letters X's and Y's, those two letters there. However, we can square the three. So that means our final answer is going to have eight X's in the numerator, four Y's in the denominator. But now we're going to take three squared, three times three, and get nine. So that would be our final answer. X to the eighth is being divided by nine Y to the fourth. And there you go. There's our answer to our first problem. All right, let's get to our next problem. All right, for our second example, I am going to put a problem, but I'm not going to get as flashy with all the graphics. Okay, so let's say we have this jumble of letters, and you can see I have a bunch of A's and B's all being multiplied together in some horrendous uh, weird looking expression. Okay, and let's see, I've got a negative exponent here on the outside. All right, well, if I were going to roll through our rules, uh, I always like to clean up the inside of the parentheses first. So I see I am multiplying some like bases, right? Because this is all multiplication in our numerator. These are all being multiplied in the denominator. So I'm going to say, let's see, I'm going to use rule number one. If I'm multiplying like bases, I add the exponents together. Okay, so that means, let's see, how many A's will I have? I'll have six A's, because I add those exponents together. Okay, I'm just taking it one rule at a time. And usually what happens with these problems, people get the answers wrong, because you're trying to use too many rules at the same time. Just rule, use one rule at a time. Okay, next, we are going to divide the like bases, so you subtract the exponents. So let's see, 6 minus 3, that's 3. So I know I'm going to have 2 and 5. Those are parts of the answers. If I subtract that, I'm going to get 3 A's. Okay, likewise, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to subtract 3 minus 9, I get negative 6. Okay. Next. Hmm. All right, well, I've got powers in here being raised to another power. So I'm going to use rule 3. So rule 3 says I take these exponents, and if you don't see an exponent, you put a 1, and I multiply all of these exponents by the outside power. Okay, so that means I've got 2's, A's, B's, 5's, yeah, I don't even need to write these uh, parentheses anymore, but let's see if I multiply, I'm going to get negative 3. And, you know, this isn't the only way to do this problem. We could have messed around with that negative exponent and moved it down there. Mm, but I felt like using this property first. Okay, so I multiplied all of these exponents by negative 3. All right, what's next? Well, what's next is I now notice that I have negative exponents. If there's negative exponents, you move them to change them to be positive. So the only thing that doesn't get moved are these 18 Bs. Right, so the 9 As get moved. That's how we change the exponent to a positive. Let's see, these uh, 3 2s, they belong down here, except now with a positive exponent. These three fives belong up here. See, I move them up to change that to a positive exponent. All right, last, what I want to do is, of course, multiply these. So these aren't, this isn't really a, any special rule. I'm just taking five and cubing it. Five times five times five, and that's 125. So I'm just going to clean it up a little bit by getting rid of those powers by actually multiplying. So 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And I'm going to leave that. It does not reduce the relative or relatively prime. They don't have any factors in common, so I'm just going to leave it. And there you have it. There's our final answer to our second problem. Make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out all our other videos, our other uh, interactive quizzes, and our text-based lessons.
Take care.